All right, welcome to this video. Let's solve lead code problem 345, reverse vowels of a string. Now, of course, you can solve this problem by using regular expressions, which I see a lot of solutions doing, and that's perfectly fine. However, personally, I suck at regular expressions. And if you're asked this in, say, a whiteboarding interview, and you know you don't know regular expressions that well, you could get stuck, right? Now, of course, if you're asked this on on-site or perhaps say, a phone screening, you're allowed to Google things, but maybe you know you're stressed out and you know all the regular expression syntax will confuse you. And so I decided to go with a non-regular expression approach. And it's more intuitive to me because I'm not good at regular expressions. But of course, if you solve this using regular expressions, you're more than welcome to, right? This is just my take, my solution. And of course, if you like this kind of content, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and you can check out my full-length courses on kaeducation.com. With that being said, let's get started. So uh, hopefully you read the directions, but of course, if you haven't, we're gonna reverse the vowels, right? So vowels are A, E, I, O, U. They're not, we're not gonna include Y. It says so right here. So the vowels are E and O, we're gonna swap them, right? And so, let's get started with my non-regular expression solution. So I'll say const vowels is equal to this hash table. I'm gonna use a hash table to store the vowels because I want that O of one lookup time that hash tables give us. And of course, it'll look like this, right? It'll say A, A is a vowel, so we'll say true, right? So is a capital A, that's also a vowel, so we'll say true. So is E, blah, blah, blah. But right now it's empty, so we gotta fill it up with vowels. So I'll say for const char of A, E, I, O, U, and then also the uppercase version, right? So for of loops, you can put, you can loop over strings or arrays. So I'll pass in the string which has an which has all the vowels, excluding Y. And I'll say vowels at char, right, from up here. Vowels char is equal to true. So this fills up this empty vowels hash table slash JavaScript object to look like this. So now we have something to refer to if something is a vowel. Then I'll say const characters. Okay, so let me explain something. Now strings in JavaScript are immutable, right? That's a really fancy way of saying we can't really modify strings directly, right? And what they want you to do is, well, reverse the vowels of a string, right? Take this E and O, reverse them. But we can't modify strings directly in JavaScript. They're immutable. So how do we solve this problem? Well, what we're gonna do is turn the string into an array, and then we can modify arrays directly, right? You know, dot .push, or we can swap things around the array. So turn the string into an array, which we can modify, then once we modify that array by swapping the vowels, blah, 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 turn that array back into a string. I hope that makes sense. So again, strings are immutable. We'll turn it into a array of characters. So let's say s.split on empty space, all right? Then what I'm gonna do is to switch things, or to uh, reverse the things around, right, in my array of characters now, I wanna have a left and a right pointer and then swap the things at the left and right pointer if they're vowels and then shrink the left and right pointer, swap if necessary until we reach like the center of the uh, word or array we're working with, right? So we need that left and right pointer, right, that start opposite ends. We'll say let left be equal to zero because left is on the first character of the array we create of characters. First thing in that array is at index zero. And of course the right pointer has to be on the opposite end. So I'll say let right be equal to s.length minus one. And I'll say while left pointer is less than right pointer. All right, now we gotta make sure the left pointer is at a valid vowel. If it's not, keep moving it up and up and up until the left pointer is at a vowel. So I'll just repeat while left is less than right and I'll do s left in vowels is equal to false. So whatever is at s at index left is not a vowel. We can also just condense this to, I'll take this out and then put the not marker right here, okay? This just makes the code a little bit shorter. I'll say left plus equals one. And again, all this is saying is that if the left pointer right now is not a vowel, keep moving it up until it's at a valid vowel, right? Awesome. And we gotta do the same for the right pointer. If the right pointer is not at a valid vowel, keep moving it down and down and down within the, within the boundaries of the uh, array, right, characters. 
So, I can actually just copy this. I'm gonna say ns right is not in vowels. We have the exclamation mark. We're gonna do right minus equals one. Okay, now, after these two while loops within this while loop finish, okay, now the left and right pointer are gonna be at valid vowels and we gotta swap them around. Now, I personally find swapping a bit hard to understand, so I always delegate swapping to a helper function I'll call swap, and swap will, give me one second, so swap, which is outside our reverse vowels function, will take in three arguments, right? An array, an i, and a j index, and of course we can do r i is now equal to r j, right? The swap, this is the swapping logic, r j is equal to r i. Here's a swap. It's not perfect though, because we just set ri to be equal to rj. So we say rj is equal to ri. We're saying rj is equal to rj. So we need to store the old value of ri to avoid this problem. So I'll say const temp is equal to ri. Then replace this here with temp. All right, so we have that swap helper function. Okay, let's go back up to reverse vowels. So again, after these two while loops finish, now, the left and right pointer are at valid vowels, and we gotta swap them. Thankfully, we have the swap helper function. So I'll say swap, and it takes in uh, the array we need to swap with, so I'll pass in characters. So swap, characters, and it needs to be, it needs to be provided two valid indices to swap with, i and j. Here would be, well, left and right. And of course, we're in a while loop. We want to make sure that it doesn't run on infinitely. So I'll say left plus equals one and right minus equals one. Okay. So now our characters array, right? The vowels have been swapped around, but we need to return a string back. So let's turn our array where we just swapped all that stuff around. We got to turn this array back into a string. And to do that in JavaScript, we'll use dot join on the array. So I'll say uh, return characters dot join on an empty space. All right, so now our characters array with everything that's been swapped is now back into a string. And yeah, we should actually be good to go. So I'm gonna copy everything, head over to lead code, paste it in, make sure it works, passes their tests. All right, great, it does. So, what is the reverse vowels complexity analysis? Time complexity is O of n, where n is the number of characters in a string. Now, it's important to note that a lot of times, uh, if you're new to programming or you're not really familiar with while loops, it's easy to think that, hey, nested while loops are, uh, you know, it's like quadrag or cube time complexity. But notice that these inner while loops only run while left is less than right. So, worst case, all these loops go over every character in the input string, O of n at worst, right? So that's how we got that O of n time complexity. And space complexity is O of n, because remember we have that uh, characters variable where we turn the string into an array, and that is the same length as the uh, input string, so O of n space complexity. All right, that should be it for this video.